starting from now. Okay, so once again, if you guys want to raise your opinion, okay, you may uh, you may raise your hand first, and the moderator will allow you will be the one to allow you choose you to deliver your statement. I think that's all the opinion from uh, from me. Without further ado, let's <clears throat> let the ball rolling. Okay, let's give the floor to Miss Kisa. The floor is yours, Miss. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sanchan, for the time given. Um, let me share the screen. Okay. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself again. My name is Adzani Gaisani Ada. You can call me Gesa and I'll be moderator for tonight's discussion. Our discussion today is about challenges and prospects for the acceptance of cultured meat. First, let us take a look at this news. World's first lab crown burger is eaten in London. This news is published in 2013, which is more than five years ago. And let's take a look to the next on news. It is uh, last year that Singapore approved lab grown chicken meat. So you know that um, we can know that it is from 2013 and also 2020. It means that research, many research has been done to improve and also de to develop the cultured meat. But before we depend our discussion today, let us uh, share our opinion. What is cultured meat actually? And how is it produced? Anybody wants to share their opinion regarding this question, please raise your hand. Yeah, please, Miss Livia. Uh, as far as I know, correct me if I if I'm mistaken. Like it is a uh, meat that uh, grew from the laboratorium using like the <clears throat> maybe the DNA of the animal in in every kind of animal I think, and it is grown by the laboratory. It means didn't need to be uh, reproduced from the uh, the real animal. It's just like the cell of the, or the genes or the DNA from the animals that it uh, simply will not like kill or hurt the animal itself in order to fulfill the, the meat, the, the stock of the meat for people to consume. Thank you, miss. Thank you, Ms. Lika. So Ms. Lika said that cultured meat is a meat that produced in a laboratory um, which no longer use leaf animal for its uh, for the production. Okay, thank you, Ms. Lika. Um, anybody else want to share their opinion about what is cultured meat and how is it produced? Yeah, please, Mr. Sunshine. Okay, thank you, Gisa, for the occasions. I believe that this is quite interesting because uh, there is a culture and that is a meat. There are two words right here. So probably there is a connections, how we can meet as a part of our significant culture. So some uh, culture can be identified as something that's commonly be done. Okay, but we talk about meat, so probably culture is something that commonly can be eaten by everyone. So how to make it available? And that's why we there are some people, or some scientists, yeah, they want to provide a better quality of meat that and not only uh, not only will it provide such a high quality, but also how it can also help those who live in poverty, those who who uh, who actually suffering from. Uh, how to say kekurangan gizi 
uh, stunting, yeah. Some 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 people, some children oh, suffering from uh, yeah malnutrition as well, and that's why culture meat uh, is purposely um, made for for those kinds of segmentations. How to help people that actually uh, living in underdeveloped condition? Okay, uh, but how is it actually produced? I'm not really sure <laughs> because it's not my field. Probably, yeah, they will make it in the laboratory, but it to, to exactly the process. I'm not really sure about that. Okay, I think that's all for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sunshine. Well, as Mr. Sunshine said that cultured meat is uh, something that is produced to have better quality and also to uh, to be a solution for poverty or maybe in malnutrition. Yeah, please, Mr. Ahmad. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for this occasion. I'm not a fan of this kind of area and I don't give a huge concern about it. And uh, I just hear this uh, since a week ago. It's quite interesting for me for discussing it and thank you. Uh, in my opinion, um, it's kind of meat that is produced in the laboratory which used the, seems like a meristematic uh, tissue or maybe the, with the mitos, uh, I mean, with um, what? The, how to say pembelahan cell? Yeah, with using that mitotic um, a method to create the new cells. It's gonna be like uh, the culture jaringan, how to say, uh, the tissue, tissue culture, culture in the lab. Yeah, tissue culture in the what sterilized area. So the concern is how to make the condition that quiet appropriate to the cell to methodically um, reproduce by themselves and they create the real meat in the life of people. And that is the, the concern in my opinion, and maybe I'm false in this area. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you, Mr. Ahmed. So, Mr. Ahmed, uh, and Mr. Ahmed, point of view, um, cultured meat is a meat that produced by uh, cells, maybe cells differentiation, or we can say it is a tissue culture, and the production is is in a cultured environment, meaning that there are some uh, parameters that should be uh, should be implemented to produce the cultured meat. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ahmad. So yes, let us go to the next slide. So what is cultured meat actually? Yeah, some of you have uh, a true <laughs> close answer. Uh, cultured meat as a meat that produces from animal cells. The cells are proliferated in an environment which provides energy and nutrients for crop support. Cultured meat can be also said as lab grown meat, in vitro meat, artificial meat, or clean meat. And who does the cultured meat produce? In short, actually, uh, there are three main stages. There are three main stages uh, in the cultured meat production. The first is the, the main source of the culture meat is the stem cells. And what is stem cells? Stem cells is stem cells are cells that can uh, clone, clone clonogenic. They can uh, self renew, they have self renewal capabilities and they can uh, differentiate into multiple cell lines. The livestock that used to produce culture meat is Berries, berries. For example, we can use pig and also cow and also chicken. And it starts that the cells are taken from muscle tissue from embryo and also they are expanded and then differentiated into muscle cells. The cells are then put, put into a bioreactor. In the bioreactor, besides stem cells, we all we are input some culture medium for the growth support, for example, serums. And after that, the cells are transferred to a scaffold to grow this into muscle fibers and larger tissue. 
The next question is, do you think, why do we need cult of meat? No, thanks. Oh, please raise your hand if you want to answer this question. Yeah, please, Mr. Ahmad. Uh, yeah, uh, before I step into the anthropo perspective, uh, it's about the science itself. So sometimes when we do the research, the artificial meat need, eh, the artificial meat is gonna be one of the variable that included in the in the research itself. So it's gonna be important in the research. Seems like when I want to know about the microbiome that exists in the artificial meat so it's gonna be the real important thing that i need to be included in my research so it's gonna be important however besides of the science for science perspective for the anthropo perspective is gonna be same with the mr sunshine opinion before which is uh, meet the situation when the starvation is gonna be eradicated by this um what research or this development so people can grab their meat cheaply uh, and we can uh, create the new situation that we don't need the uh the grow of the real chicken or maybe the real pig by this artificial meat. Maybe there are so many disputes will be appear, seems like about the thought that uh, see about the, the halal or maybe about the genetics problem from, from this, but we need to do the further research about this, about this. So because of this consideration, I propose the first opinion by, this, uh, by the science for science itself in the first step before we step into uh, to the anthropo perspective, anthropo perspective beneficiaries in the future thank you okay thank you mr ahmed uh, mr ahmed said that um, the needs of culture media as well uh, there are two main needs they are for science purpose and also to to meet the meet the situation um, i mean to fulfill our needs, for example, on to result to to be a solution for malnutrition, starvation, and other problems. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, next, um, anybody else wants to speak up their opinion? Okay. Um, okay. Please, Mr. Moonshine. Okay, Miss uh, Desa, thank you for your opportunity to me. And uh, I don't know if um, uh, maybe I don't hear uh, on the previous slide that state about the the good the goodness about the culture the culture meat and 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 something like that. But I just wanna uh, add my opinion. Uh, why do we need culture meat? Maybe because we saw that our earth uh, right now is is lack of land, and we cannot we cannot have a, a how to say it, a lot of land to to produce our meat by 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 the nature the, the nature or the animal. And because of that, so we have to invent something more, something more modern, so we can still fulfill our our needs, our food needs, uh, every uh, in our daily life. And uh, and the second about why we need is, is that correct, right? The, the question about why do we need, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Because the slide. <laughs> Yeah, uh, why do we need, yeah why do we need uh culture meat maybe the second one because we want to uh, we want and we try to to share uh, to save our our planet because we know that from from research and scientific uh, 
invention that said that uh, the animals, the, the farm animals, release a lot of carbon uh, to to our air or to our 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 atmosphere. So it uh, it made our our atmosphere or our air uh, not good enough to 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 people or maybe create a global warming. So maybe maybe that's uh, that's from me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Munshaim. Almost in. And Mr. Munchain opinion, uh, why do we need culture meat is because uh, two main factors. The first one is we have limited sources of food and also um, the animal farming itself uh, causing a bad impact for our environment, such as global warming and also causing pollution. Okay, thank you, Mr. Munchain. Um, the next one will be, uh, I will over Miss Miss Dewi to answer the question maybe, perhaps. Um, Maybe Mr. Dewi have some trouble with connection. No, <laughs> sorry, Miss. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Maybe later. <laughs> maybe later another maybe, because I have a summer job and I and I still listen to your, uh, your. Yeah, maybe the other. Okay, maybe Miss um, Dania, maybe? Do you want to give or share your opinion about this question? Uh, yeah, I think I'm agree with the opinion before. It's to take all the suffering of hunger by creating about food production and food security. And also, um, the animal was produce uh, emission of carbon and methane. Methane is the highly potential to global warming because it's that five times stronger than carbon itself. And the other reason is, I think, because uh, the culture process of this culture myth doesn't include a nervous system and therefore it doesn't involve pain or um, infragment of right to that animal. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Okay, thank you, Miss Dania. Um, Miss Dania said that um, the needs of culture meat due to some reasons, for example, hunger, and also um, because of a climate uh, climate change that that is uh, an impact from animal farming, and also it is also regarding animal welfare, where it is also related to ethics of animal. Yes, please, Mr. Sunshine. Uh, um. Regardless of the benefits and uh, the positive impact that might be only caused by the developments of uh, cultured meats, I believe that uh, to enhance the quality of the meat and make it more affordable is also the responsibility of those people who have been given such a huge value in developing uh, uh, the research in academics. And Developing this kinds of cultured meat will also become a significant evidence that uh, we have advanced our civilization and we also grow our awareness toward those in need. And not only that, we show that 
uh, those theoretical framework that we have been studying in university or campus might also bring such a, a enormous benefits for those or practical an enormous practical benefit for those who didn't get the same chances to learn within the college or uh, educational institution. So in short, uh, we need to uh, we need a culture to be developed because um, because this is to show the people that we have a, that we bring back the responsibility of having science, uh, having learning the sciences, and we, we prove them that we can do something better because everyone is like uh, glorifying that the only thing that can save poverty is education, and we need to prove that. And how we prove that by for example, researching toward this kinds of product called submit. I think that's on me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Mut, uh, Mr. Sanchen. Also, you said that it is to grow our awareness to those who need, meaning that um, uh, it is to make uh, science become beneficial for all people so that um, all people have access to the meat and also yeah for learning science and a chance for all people also okay thank you mr Stein. um anybody else maybe um mr Mr. Sorry, Miss Putri, maybe you have some opinion about the needs of culture meat. Okay. Miss Lailatul, maybe? Do you want to share your opinion about the needs of cultural meat? Okay, it seems that Miss Lailatul have some trouble with connection. So let us come to the next slide. Yeah, it is true that there are so many reasons regarding uh, the development of cultured meat, but we think the urgencies to grow or in development cultured meat is to fulfill food demand. It is uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization predict that more food will be needed to fulfill the demand of the growing population. Meanwhile, uh, maybe and meat consumption in, is decreasing in some developed countries, but its global consumption is increasing. And some consumers don't want to change their diet. So meat is still meat for us a uh, stable food maybe. And also it is also predicted that intake of meat will be magnified several times uh, several times, and conventional meat supply will not be sufficient to meet the demands. Let us uh, discuss about potential benefit of counter meat. Besides to fulfill food demand, uh, what other potential benefit that you think uh, it is used uh, it is what is the potential benefit of cultured meat? Anybody wants to share their opinion, maybe, or share their perspective about the potential benefit of cultured meat? Oh, yeah, please, Mr. Ahmad. Uh, well, uh, thank you for the time. Um, maybe it's only in my opinion, so already <laughs> for the other people, people opinions too. Um, in in my perspective, when 
we have the culture meat to be one of our culture in the our diary so it's gonna be the new field of the ethics perspective maybe for the future for the science maybe there will be the new rule about how to uh what used the cultured meat ethically to the future because cell has their own uh, right maybe for the future because they are uh, quiet um, near in our life that is only in my perspective and secondly maybe for the development of the science we will have the new field of our knowledge particularly in the biology perspective so it's going to be the new field in the university not only in the master degree but also maybe it's going to be one of the common knowledge for the senior high school student maybe so that's going to be the real shot for our knowledge advancement in the humankind thank you okay mr rahmat um uh, mr rahmat said that potential benefit of culture meat uh is new rule and also new field new real new rule means that there are some new rules that will be uh i mean no new role in ethics because culture meat is something new and it is uh it is true that it is it can be similar similarized with the regulation of other food and also it it enlarged the horizons in biological or scientific field okay thank you uh next maybe anybody else anybody else want to share your opinion about the potential benefit of cultured meat okay mr aldo maybe do you want to share some views about the potential benefit of cult meat? Hello. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to uh, emphasize things that have been mentioned by everyone before. Yeah, I do agree that uh, it is actually an advance an advancement of technology uh, that is that must be supported in our uh, society right now. Because uh, you know, in terms of uh, fulfilling uh, the food needs uh, needed by a lot of people uh, or uh, a lot of areas, especially um, areas uh, in which they uh, they are very difficult to uh, grow uh, foods and those kinds of things, I guess uh, this uh, this kind of uh, cultured meat can be solution mm -hmm. for those uh, needed. Um, on the other hand, uh, I, I just uh, it is actually uh, really new for me. Uh, I've just read that it's also uh, can um, support um, the um, how do we say that? I mean, um, people do not need to uh, pro proliferate the livestock, right? And it could also save and uh, economize the uh, lands uh, of certain areas. Hence, um, it can make uh, the foods uh, healthier because when we don't um, grow uh, foods um, in the livestock, uh, it, it could be healthier because uh, there is no more uh, contaminations or infections um, produced in uh, certain industries because uh, it's kind of um, more scientific than before. So uh, as I said earlier, uh, the uh, bad uh, bacteria, uh, the bad things uh, that is uh, possessed in uh, certain meats, at least can be reduced. So yeah, I, I guess uh, it is very great. Thank you, Miss. Okay, thank you, Mr. Aldo. Mm, there are, there are say three, three potential benefit of cultured meat. It is to the advancement of technology can solve worldwide so a situation, worldwide problem, and also it can saving lands and um, and produce healthier food because because food is always related to contamination and also disease. Okay, thank you, Mr. Aldo. 
Oh, thank you, Mister Jelajah Ilmu, please. Thanks for your time. Uh, we all know that a sign has a given a lot of, or a number of benefit, uh, positive impact for humans, especially for how uh, human face new uh, challenges in the world. And for me about uh, cultured meat, cultured meat, it is one of uh, uh, science productions, uh, science productions, and maybe uh, one day, one day, science will find out a new, uh, a new solution uh, beside uh, cultures, uh, cultured meat, but. In my point of view, what is the potential benefit of culture meat? As a teacher, uh, I mean uh, Arabic teacher, it can give uh, a number effect. Uh, for example, in academic university, especially. Uh, Education, uh, especially institution, will uh, discuss uh, will discuss about uh, this topic. Even uh, culture meat, uh, including in their uh, curriculum, like that. And uh, beside that, it is also. Uh, helping to deliver, deliver, uh, develop country, for example, uh, uh, America or a number country. That's all for me. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fajar Um, I, yeah, Mr. Fajar Umu, uh, said that the potential benefit of culture mean is. Yeah, it, it can uh, impact uh, edu educational institutions such as it will be a new technology that needs to introduce maybe into senior high school student for larger than larger dehiscence because science is always changing, always grow, always develop. And also the second potential benefits that helping helping developed country maybe mainly and uh, to fulfill their need of food. Okay. Okay, let us come to the next slide. Yeah, it is said that there are more potential, there are potential, but more potential benefit of cultured meat. And in short, it can be said that it can fulfill food demand, reduce pollution because it is environment friendly, reduce uh, suffering of livestock, it is related to ethics and animal welfare, totally, and also elimination of foodborne and nutrition related diseases. So we can produce more healthier food and it can be accessible and cheap protein source, means that. The science can solve worldwide problem. So let us break down this potential benefit one more one. Do you really think that cultured meat better than conventional meat, or will it be more eco-friendly than the conventional one? Um, if you uh, if you have an um, opinion or views regarding this question, please raise your hand. Okay, Mr. Sunshine, please. Um, I'm in the positions to not respond uh, scientifically or economically because uh, I do not have the basic foundations on both fields. But 
So what I can say from my own perspective is that uh, due to the limit or the, the, the limit spread of those products in our developing country in Indonesia, uh, I cannot really gauge uh, whether uh, the cultured meat is going to be a better option than conventional meat. Um, uh, even though I just heard so many informations in regard to the positiveness or the positive aftermath that we can obtain from this kind of food or this kind of meat. And when it comes to eco-friendly, then the conventional one, I suppose that it, it depends on um, uh, how uh, how those who still produce the conventional meat uh, can uh, discipline, can be disciplined toward themselves, how they can um, they can control and recycle uh, the bad outcome, for example, like their, how to say, that shit, <laughs> the shits of those <laughs> farmed animals, yeah, so that they can be recycled into gas that can that will be used uh, as the basic, uh, how to say, basic fuel for cooking, for example. Uh, yeah, I believe uh, uh, I don't I don't say that the conventional one uh, will be uh, less produced or will be less um, uh, less liked by less afford by some people. Uh, and, and, and in the meantime, I can also say that um, to, to, to develop this kinds of cultured meat, knowing that uh, there is no promotion or advertisement or even socialization or campaign about cultured meat in Indonesia, showing that uh, to contribute the development of this kind of product will uh, cost us hugely. And that's why. Uh, probably there should be something that needs to be done by the government, for example, how to put uh, several uh, um, some money, a sum of money to, 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 uh, to, to, to reduce uh, the cost or to, to raise the effectiveness of this cultivate. Even though we know that the efficacy of vaccine is still another thing that are unable to be sold by the government and let alone talking about this cultivate it is actually not that really urgent to be needed in Indonesia. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> I think that's my random thought. Thank you. Okay, so you said that um, you cannot predicate which one is better. And also, um, which one is eco-friendly? It depends on how they control uh, the waste, for example, recycling, um, maybe how they control the production, maybe it is eco-friendly or not. And also, um, it means that uh, we also need several money to introduce the culture meat in Indonesia. Meanwhile, we also have some origins in another aspect that need to be prioritized first. Okay, anybody else want to answer this question? Okay, thank you. Please, Mr. Sunshine. Okay, uh, I don't know, just like Mr. Sunshine, maybe I don't know how to answer it with, with scientific or academic one, but maybe I will try to answer it with my, my own logic. Uh, I, I don't think so there will be the better, better one because uh, even, uh, even we choose conventional meat or uh, culture meat or maybe we we made uh, we make it with more eco-friendly uh, or the other uh, ideas every everything that we take from the nature is, is it must be come with consequences if we want to make the culture meat from the lab from the laboratory uh, maybe we can uh, we will face some consequences for example, we, we still don't know the, the long effect if we consume the culture meat, or maybe we we have to have the more uh, have more production about the, the about the chemical that that can that can make the culture meat, or maybe that chemical uh, that chemical things uh, also uh, we take it from another uh, another life, maybe from plant, maybe from from also the animal itself and uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. and 
yeah, even when we made it, uh, uh, we still made it in conventional. Or, uh, for example, maybe we can we want to make it more more eco friendly. So it means that that we have to to open up the farm or uh, everything that that uh, that provide or produce the the meat. Uh, more, how to say it? Like we we have to open it more because we want to make the balance between between the production and maybe the 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 global warming and something like that. So I think everything has the consequences. So in my perspective, uh, everything that we want to choose between culture with conventional, or maybe we can uh, make it eco-friendly conventional. So we have to make sure that 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 we we calculate uh, carefully. For example, like uh, like in Bali, uh, there's several people nowadays. They they already uh, put solar panel because of the 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 eco friendly uh, electricity uh, because of us. But they never calculate about the this the, uh, how many how, how much they have to spend every month. They are friendly. They eco friendly and uh, not 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 using uh, not use. Uh, the coal anymore, but they have to spend more uh, on money because of the eco-friendly label, for example, like that. So that it means that we have to to calculate every everything, uh, everything from the idea or program. So I think that's from me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Machen. Uh, you said that um, actually everything has its consequences, and uh, actually we. Uh, we can make conventional meat become eco-friendly by um, enlarge the beneficial. Uh, maybe we we should balance. Maybe maybe the waste should be uh, used for this technology and other technologies so that um so that everything is useful, and also we have uh, whether to compare whether it is eco-friendly or not, we have to do some calculations. Thank you. Uh, please, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you for the time. Um, when we talk about the cultured meat, we need to know that they are a, li a live thing, a live being, not uh, what seems like a dead being that they don't need any input or any uh, either is seems like we grow the cow or the sheep we need grass and water to maintain their life so they will grow bigger and they give us the meat for us in the conventional meat however when we grow them we will give a little uh, drawback such as the methane that they produce in their life <laughs> they they give us manure to the land and when that uh, comes to the land the methane is uh, goes up to the gases or when they breathe some uh, methane gases are uh, produced by them in the conventional meat so how about the cultured meat maybe they are need the sugar or maybe they are need the peptone or many uh, nutrients to maintain their cultured meat to be leaf in the well-being but how about the comparison about the production of their nutrients to be uh, well life will it be one of our what competitors in our diary activity so it's gonna be disputes in our life and we make we need to make the um comparison between two of them based on the nutrients level that they need but so far as we know that cow and sheep, they are both, uh, they don't, uh, what, uh, they are not our competitor in the nature because they eat the different, um, what nutrients from us. But how about the culture meat? Are they need the input similar with us? Seems like sugar or agar or uh, peptone so they can grow well. That is the first opinion. Secondly, in the microbiological perspective about the what in vitro meat will they impact our gut microbiome in our uh, what 
stomach will it give many drawbacks maybe when we eat the cultured meat the drawback is not uh, is quite higher rather than the conventional meat because it will change our gut microbiome and it will give the impact to them so it's going to be one of the other disputes perspectives so there are so many uh, research that we need to do in this kind of new area of knowledge in the whole of our life thank you Okay, thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Oh, you said that um, we need to compare the nutrition uh, between the cultured meat and also conventional meat. And also they actually different um, in terms of uh, what they need for the support. Maybe conventional meat need grass, land, water, water, mean, um, and cultured meat need sugar and other maybe culture medium for the crud support. And they can, uh, culture meat may have a bad impact since they can change, uh, change the gut microbium in our body. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, next, please, Mr. Pablo. Uh, Mr. Pablo, do you have some opinions about? Yeah, uh, I want to give my opinion about the who is the more eco-friendly conventional meat or uh, culture meat. Uh, in my opinion, I believe the I believe the culture meat more eco-friendly than than uh, conventional meat because uh, uh, it will. We reduce the greenhouse gas emission by seven, 70, 78 until 96 per percent and require seven, 7 until 45 percent less energy and uh, 82 until 96 percent less water. However, more recent research suggests that over the long term, um, the environment impact uh, of the lab grow meat could be higher than that of livestock and uh, i'm agree with the uh, moonshine said before uh, long term when we uh, consume the uh, i think my opinion just does it uh, thank you okay thank you mr power you said that um uh, you predict that culture meat is more eco-friendly rather than conventional meat because they are they can reduce greenhouse gas emission. They are less energy and less water need, but it needs more need research for long-term impact. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pablo. Um, thanks, please, Mr. Chikoneng. <laughs> Okay, um, can you hear me, Miss? Yeah. Okay, well, um, first of all, uh, I would like to say that uh, when we compare something, so uh, it will be eco-friendly, depends on the circumstances and also the condition of the nation. For example, like for the developed one, it could be eco-friendly when they have limited land, for the livestock, so they can utilize the new method to fulfill their needs and meet necessity for their societies. For example, like USA, as we know, they have four seasons. Like one of them is the winter season. So for this condition, for the farmer, especially settlement, will be difficult to find the foods for their livestock. So the culture meat, it will be useful for them to fulfill the necessities or the commodities for their societies in the meat stock. And regarding to the other <laughs> nation, like Indonesia, perhaps uh, they only have a two season, rainy season and also summer. And also Indonesia has enlarged or numerous land who hasn't inhabited by a people. So 
they don't focus on how we build it. I mean, build the culture myth and also promote it to our societies. And for the China, perhaps uh, they will do it. Uh, I would like say that it will be eco-friendly for the developed countries, but it the conventional one, it will be more eco-friendly for the developing one. Because um, in the term of that, there are a lot of farmers that perhaps when we change it to the culture myth, so they will fire or they, they will have, they will not have a job, like become a farmer because the entire thing in the food, we change it in the biological scientific. For this situation, why do, uh, for Indonesia, perhaps it will be better. We combine it, then we compare it. For example, like when we try to combine between the conventional and also the culture meat, for example, Indonesia always has the issues in the importing meat from the other nation. For example, like Thailand, also Vietnam. In this situation, why do, why do we conduct the research in the culture made to fulfill our import for our necessities or our commodities in the midst of. So it will be more economic and more useful than we always try to import it from the different nation. And, and perhaps we can also give a guidance and also give the example for the Asian nation when we are successful in the culture made. So it will be uh, guarantee us as the leader for the radical reform in the midst of and in this yeah in this situation um i stipulate that the combination between conventional one and also the culture myth will be it will be useful for indonesia in order to um gain the necessities and also commodities for the livestock. Thank you. This for me. Okay. Thank you. So you said that um, Tony, with uh, whether it is better or whether it is eco-friendly between cultured meat and conventional meat is depend on the situation in each countries because uh, each country has different characterization, meaning that. Uh, maybe cultured meat suitable for his country. Maybe conventional meat will be stable for his country. And why don't we apply a combination between cultured meat and conventional meat so it can fulfill our necessities? So in short, it can be said that whether it is eco-friendly or not, it is depend on the country, uh, the strategy of the country to implement the technology. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chikoneng. Okay, let us uh, see some fact in the research nowadays. Yeah, there is a chart, a comparison of environmental impacts of cultured meat with other meat products. Do you guys want to interpret this data or explain us about this data? Maybe Mr. Rescue want to interpret the data. Oh, I'm sorry, I cannot. Okay. Um, I'm still eating. Okay. I'm okay. eating this. Sorry. Okay. Uh, maybe Miss Sophie, do you want to explain the data? No, thank you. <laughs> okay. Miss Dewi, maybe do you want to 
uh, interpreter data for us? Uh, actually, I just read this uh, this topic, and I just understand that the culture myth is more uh, give us benefits, especially especially for our environment. So I just read in here. One study reported that culture myth was potentially much more efficient and environmentally friendly. It generated only 4% of greenhouse gas emission, emission reduce the energy needs of meat production by up to 45% and require only 2% of the land that the global meat or livestock industry does. In Thomas Toast's life cycle, cycle analysis, claim that producing 1,000 kilos of meat conventionally require 26 until 33 uh, energy. So 367 till 521 meter water. So 100 and 90 until 230 meter land and emits 1,900 till 2,240 kilos uh, CO2 emission. On the other hand, producing, producing the same quantity of meat in the future has seven until 45% lower energy energy use. Yeah, like that means I just read and I just understand. Thank you. Okay, thank you Ms. Dewey for your explanation. So uh, in short, we can see from this chart that culture meat uh, is a barrier in general but it is an exceptional in energy consumption. The energy consumption is much more higher than conventional meat such as beef, pork, or chicken. Uh, it can also conclude that, conclude that um, cultured meat has a potential benefit to environment. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Please, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, yes. Uh, well, thank you for this occasion. Anyway, I have some question about this chart itself. Seems like how the methodological to create the number one in the beef. So um, maybe it's going to be quiet. Um, what cool if I can know about it. Maybe you can hear about the um, what the source that you gain this kind of uh, research, okay. I mean, uh, this chart itself. And in my opinion, uh, the most competitor from this chart, uh, I mean, in the culture meat perspective, is the chicken. I see the chicken has the overall number, environmental impact, the lowest number, environmental impacts, rather than the other uh, options. When we see about the chicken, they are also lower than the pork and and sometimes lower than the uh, cultured meat in the two sectors. So it's going to be one of the new proposal for, uh, for the chicken, for the less environmental impacts for gaining meat products for the people. It's my opinion. Thank you. Okay, so chicken will be the competitor for beef and cultured meat. But uh, we also have to consider that um, between beef and cultured meat and also chicken, there's also consumer preference. So, uh, so we can also compare between beef and cultured meat. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ahmed. 
Oh, please, Mr. Sunshine. No, no, no. Before me is Miss Dania. Come on, Miss Dania. Dania first. Come on, Miss Dania. You first. Okay, sorry. Uh, can you please expand to us, Miss Dania? Okay, so in this uh, graphic, I see that, of course, the, the energy consumption of culture meat was higher than other meat, but it shows us the greenhouse gas emission was uh, lower than, and, than beef. And also the eutrophication. Why this eutrophication is important? Because um, eutrophication is excessive reach of nutrient in uh, leg or, or other body of water. And it, um, it frequently uh, due to run off from the land, which is cause of dense crowd of plant life and death of animal life from lack of oxygen. And, and why, uh, and it shows chicken has a, a environmental, lower environmental impact, but why we still need this beef and why we still need this culture meat because the protein of that meat and beef is higher than chicken. I mean like from the the nutrition the beef or culture meat was has a big benefit to us. And from this comparison of environmental impact and culture uh, culture meat and beef. Of course we know that the culture meat was more friendly than than beef. Here. So my point is, is in the eutrophications one, because as we as we see that beef uh, has a higher higher percentage in these eutrophications, and that was uh, really important because it can it can make. Um, a death of animal life due to that lack of oxygen. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Lenia, for your explanation. Ms. Lenia, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, maybe why do still meat beef and also culture meat maybe because of uh, the nutritional value of the of its food. And I forgot to tell Mr. Ahmad that this is uh, this data is collected from simulation for years, so that uh, why is called is data exists. Meanwhile, cultured meat is not and uh, commercially spread yet. This is a simulation data from uh, research that has been done. Yeah, please, Mr. Sunshine. Okay, Lisa, but uh, before that, I'd like you to explain what do you mean by eutrophication? Is it something good or something bad for environment? Mm -hmm. well, I, um, I'm not really, I'm not really an expert in eutrophication, but, but mm -hmm. my focus is here is greenhouse and also land use. Sorry. Okay, okay, because uh, because it seems like uh, I have the opposite understanding of what has been said by Miss Dania. 
Okay. Uh, what I caught from the statement of Ms. Dania, it seems that eutrophications can actually endanger the environment or the lake because uh, it will uh, harm the nutrition that should be existed within uh, the water contained in lake or something similar to that. Okay, <clears throat> but in my own understanding, after reading some, some website, I'm not really sure whether uh, it is accurate or not, uh, a eutrophication is as uh, um, I'm, I'm like it, it. It brings more positive impact. It means that it contains and rejuvenate the the, the entity or the uh, the the quantity of nutrients within water. So it's actually something good. Okay, so that's to respond what has been said by Miss Dani. <laughs> okay, um, but when looking toward this um, graph, I can say that oh, writing tax one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> I mean, like, uh, we know that there is something so unique, even though we know that, uh, even though considering that uh, the cultured meat has a really uh, uh, had completely exhausted the energy. Uh, I mean, like, it requires the highest energy from the from the management and its cultivation, for example. But uh, something that uh, quite similar in, uh, that have a similar interest, uh, interest, interesting, uh, interesting uh, uh, point is that uh, when we look into beef, it almost have the similar value in each element. So it's almost balanced between the negative side and the positive side that beef can over toward us is actually balanced. Meanwhile, when we talk about culture meat, means that we, we are demanded to provide such a huge energy provider, which then is still something that we, uh, we couldn't or we are not brave enough to expect from our country because we still have the problems uh, um, let alone talking about energy provider, we still are unable to efficiently, uh, how to say, um, impose uh, the law of fair and adequate law enforcement toward our country. So, uh, so I say that uh, if you want to uh, uh, support this idea, I'm like having cuts of meat really spread in Indonesia, uh, we must be ready. Uh, to to reduce uh, to to increase the number of energy provider, uh, not only relying uh, not only relying on the existed or the available avail the availability of uh, pembangkit listrik naga uh, all resources all type of resources whether it's actually wind water uh, nuclear or coal or something similar to that but we also need to have a, a more diversifying methods how to have more energy, so that's why it can supply the existence of hot meat that can be easily produced the word, uh, in every regions in Indonesia. Okay, uh, yeah, I think because because it's um, it's really uh, it's it's uh, it's really happiness uh, in my perspective to know that uh, meat uh, culture meat is have a promising prospect in the future because it, it, it is not that really bad in terms of greenhouse gas emission and we do not need such a massive portions of land use for that and eutrophication it also is uh, even though it doesn't really um, put a significant impact to it something like water Okay, so yeah, I do agree with this kinds of uh, with this culture meat to be developed more, but uh, we must be ready to uh, to contain specific energy provider to support that. Okay, I think that's for me, uh, Ms. Kisa. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Sahib, so you said that um, we can see that culture meat is uh, can be uh, can have uh, tend to be eco friendly, but we have still still have some issues. Where especially in energy consumption, but actually energy consumption uh, have more issues. There are issues related to energy consumption. It is about the waste. A study found that in one scenario, culture meat is not always more climate friendly because um, because the carbon dioxide that emits by the production of cultured meat. 
the carbon dioxide remains longer in the atmosphere than methane or nitrous oxide emitted by conventional meat production. Hence, they find that the long-term cultured meat may even generate more climate damage than beef, but it's still uh, research and still a simulation. So it needs more research and also application to know the exact calculations of um, the energy and the emission resulting by the production of cultured meat. So let us uh, move to the next topic, animal welfare. What is animal welfare actually? It is everything that related to the physical and mental state of animal according to the natural behavior of animal and that need to be implemented and enforced to protect animal from everyone who is not suitable for animals used by humans. And why is this animal welfare important? It is because there are so many animals around the world suffering, being used for entertainment, food, medicine, fishing, scientific advancement and exotic facts. Exotic pets means that uh, there are so many animals worldwide mistreated by human. And the animal welfare can, welfare can reach with this principle, the five freedoms. Freedom from hunger or thirst, freedom for discomfort, freedom from pain, injury, or disease, freedom to express normal behavior, and also freedom from fear and distress. Regarding this topic, do you think that culture meat resolve animal welfare concern? Anybody have opinion regarding this matter? Yes, please, Mr. Chikoneng. Okay, I, I would like to answer this question. Uh, I'm regarding to this statement when we are, when we already find the alternate or a solution for our problems. For example, diversity of animals. Could you imagine um, the cow or the sheep will be ang will be oh, the ancient <laughs> puna puna ancient right? <laughs> Could you imagine about extinct? Yeah. Oh, extinct. Oh, sorry. Ancient, uh, in here, you learn it. Um, yeah, extinct. Uh, so could you imagine there's no, there no coal, there's no a ship? <laughs> because what we did in our environment and our wood. And for this situation, I would like to say I beg to defer. I beg to defer. Perhaps it will be reduced, the animal welfare, especially. Because at the same time, we try to give a solution for our climate change in global warming aspects. But hence, we, hence we try to um, exacerbate the other creation. And we don't try to blame ourselves to be more ethic. For example, like, Perhaps we can do it, but will you give a, will you give a guarantee that a lot of the industrial activities will reduce their carbon dioxide for economic sector? The answer is it will be reduced, but a little perhaps, because the more rich you are, the more you need money to um, accelerate your economic welfare. And in this situation, you need industries that will produce a lot of things like um, what is that, clothes and whatever is it. And it will be really toxic for our climate change. And how many, how many carbon dioxide were the animals when we compare it to the other sector, especially in industrial activities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Connect. So you thought that it may reduce 
uh, or may result animal welfare, but it also has a bad impact, especially about the waste. Maybe it can be toxic for our environment. Thank you, Mr. Chikonang. Uh, I, mean, uh, I would uh, I will I would like to emphasize that first of all it's population right it's coming from the problem of population so there's a solution for the culture myth but do we try to only have a two children or cabin in Indonesia term absolutely there's a lot of people that will ignore us that low regarding of the population and we tend to blame the animal as our partner perhaps in this world and we try to eliminate them and the second is climate change like i did uh, like i have said before <clears throat> thank you climate change and population all right okay thank you mr chikonen um uh, next, uh, anybody wants to answer this question? Perhaps, yeah, please, Mr. Ku. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. I miss Miss Kisha. <laughs> so sorry. And this culture with resolved animal welfare concern. Yeah, I'm very interested uh, listening to Mr. C, Mr. C, Mr. Chico, Mr. Chico's opinion. It's like how arrogant we are. It's like yeah, culture meat happens because of they they comes to bring uh, they comes to bring the new breakthrough. But but the greenhouse has been decreased uh, decreased uh, by industrialization. How to how to conserve uh, about the the real meat means like. Um, how to, to how, how to say it's like the farmer it's like the the villagers and uh when i compare between the city and the villagers means uh several months ago that i stayed in the city and uh right now i come back in my city uh, I, right now i come back in my village it's like who cares of how to say in english Pumalihara, how to say in english Pumalihara? How to say, sir? Normally, hear in English. Look after. Look after, yeah. How to look after being a uh, breeder. It's like we, we can look after the cow, the cot. But yeah, that's right. It's economic. It is more economical for conserving the culture. But uh, as like Mr. Moonshine said, that when we have the new thing, means there is cost and effect there is pros and cons yeah it's really uh, fascinating indeed for being discussed thank you for my perspective miss kesha okay thank you mr Kosa. Uh, you said that um uh actually maybe we need um a more information about how to look after the uh the animal in the farm so that we can meet the so that we can resolve animal welfare concern without uh, without using cultured meat yes uh, sorry miss I, I keep the addition it's like I'm the villagers but uh, most of the young generations they don't want to look after <laughs> to be the breeder so that I I Bring, uh, I give the opinion because of I saw from my environment as the young as the young generation, they are lazy to be the breeder. So it means we are easy to being con consumers, not producers. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay, Mr. Tu, I got it. Uh, next, please, Mr. Ahmed. Ah yes. Uh, today is the day of my English practice day. So maybe something that I will share today was shared by the previous speaker seems like the extension of the animal welfare. <laughs> yeah, because the breeder has no any concern about growing them up and they will not treat them well. Because yeah, we have the other 
way to gain the, the meat by the cultured meat. So why do we need to uh, breeding them? Why do we need to growing them well? Why do we need to give them grass and water and land? So maybe the extinction the ex extinction of them will be the best choice for us because we can produce meat without them. Because of this consideration, it's not the best way to give the well animal welfare for, 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 their, for their freedom. Maybe their freedom will be the extinction itself. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ahmad. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, it can, we can conclude that um, uh, culture meat can resolve animal welfare concern. But as, uh, as you guys discussed that there will be pro and cons. Animal welfare, uh, and actually animal welfare concern uh, can reach or can be resolved by cultured animals because, because the production doesn't involve the killing of animals. It doesn't have nervous system and cannot feel pain, cannot feel pain. Even in the process or the procedure, sometimes uh, it can, can be performed under local or full anesthesia so that uh, they don't feel pain as it is reaching the five, five freedoms in the previous slide, but it can also not resolve well animal, animal welfare. Because why? Let us take a look at some culture medium that use for uh, the production of cultured meat. It needs the MEM, fatal bufine serum, horse serum, and chicken embryo extract. So from the name, we know that it is animal derived component. And in the fetal bovine serum, it is harvested from bovine fetuses taken from pregnant cows during slaughter. And it is means that it is without any form of anesthesia. It is it is a uh, opposite of animal welfare. So that to to uh the animal welfare can reach from cultured meat, cultured meat if they don't use or they are free of animal derived components. But if the cultured medium use uh, from plant or from plant protein, then we have to uh, look at the potential risk of allergens because allergen is also the main reason in, for for our health, for uh, a main problem in the terms of health. So let us uh, discuss about nutrition. Do you think that culture meat has identical nutrition to conventional meat? And do you think that is it safe for human consumption? Uh, do you guys have Opinion regarding this matter. Mm -hmm. Maybe Miss Sophie, you want to uh, give your opinion about the comprehension of the nutrition of cultured meat and also conventional meat. Ms. Sophie? Oh. Okay, maybe she has some trouble with correction. Anybody else want to give the, your opinion about the nutritional value and the safety of consumption, maybe? Yes, please, Mr. Sunshine. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, 
Isa mo so far, just be patient. <laughs> okay, so yeah, thank you, Gaysa. Uh, yeah, I think it's safe to say because uh, there must be uh, several standards that will be uh, uh, the reasons why finally some advanced uh, some developed countries promote uh, this uh, food uh, for uh, for uh, for their citizen. Okay, even though I, I I'm not really sure just how tight and how uh, how 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 will be how how is the 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 expected regulations to 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 produce this kinds of uh, food because uh, culture seems like a neat uh, laboratory and in which not every factory uh, can afford to do that. Okay, while if we are, uh, if you ask me about whether it's actually safe, uh, it is. It has been principally produced for the sake of human, so I can say that it should be granted to be safe for a human as well. Okay, probably that's uh, my tentative uh, statement. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Him. Uh, you said uh, that culture meat uh, has identical nutrition to conventional meat because there must be regulation to. Uh, to introduce this to market and one of the reasons may be from the nutritional value and is this it must be safe because it is for human consumption and, and there are some strict regulations should implement to to make it uh, edible for consumption for human consumption okay please mr ahmed Uh, Mr. Hamad, do you want to give your opinion about this question? He is lagging. Oh, okay. Is it my time? Uh, no, uh, sorry. Yeah, it's your time, Afida. Okay. Oh, your time, sorry, baby. Sorry. <laughs> uh, huge trouble here. Ah, uh, fuck with that. Yes. Um, I believe that the nutrition will be identical because the meat, uh, I mean the cultured meat itself is sourced by the genetical genetically same with the conventional meat. <laughs> However, I see a huge concern about the safetyness here. From the culture medium itself, we see that there are two antibiotics. Uh, there are penicillin and streptomycin. So how to sanitize both of them from the meat? That will be one of the factors that we need to concern because we know that penicillin and streptomycin are both of them are identical there are uh, they are antibiotics and uh, when they are consumed by the people we need the recipe from the doctors so <laughs> it's it it will not easy to gain the antibiotics to uh, edible in our life and then um, about the safety ness again how about the uh, proportion of the lactic acid bacteria or maybe the coliform bacteria that exist in the um, what this in vitro uh, meat because uh, when we eat the conventional meat we will gain the new lactic acid bacteria that will uh, help us to digest them quite well so how about it uh, we need to do the further research about it or maybe there are many research about it that uh, exists in the uh, scholar, uh, I mean, Google scholars, or maybe the science direct, but I haven't read about them. So it's one of the uh, questions that need to be solved by myself in the near future, maybe. And thank you for this question because it gives me the new perspective about the convention, about the differentiation about the conventional meat and the uh, I, um, I mean, cultured meat. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, Ms. Lambert. Um, you said that it must be identical since the cultured meat, uh, the main source of the cultured meat comes from conventional meat. But you have uh, issue about the safety of consumption because uh, uh, there are, there's antibiotics that input into the production since actually in antibiotic ha we have some strict regulations regarding the consumption of antibiotics because we need recipe and recipe from the doctor. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, please, Mr. Indre Wanok. Okay, well, so uh, I suppose that I would like to talk about in the health case in this uh, occasion. And the question is, is it safe for human consumption or not? So this is the big question. So um, as far as I do a kind of research that related with this, there, there doesn't seem to be any evidence that lab ground meat is damaging to human health. Yeah, when we try to compare to conventional meat in this uh, situation. And in fact, the risk of disease is likely to be lower under sterile lab condition. And the question about the nutrition too in this situation, yeah, and also there is no a big information that related with a kind of uh, the contents that related to the meat. But uh, the, the truth is uh, one of the beneficial thing for us is uh, the price. The price is so extremely cheaper than the conventional meat. So this is the reason that it will trying to make us get the healthy yeah, with the cheap consumption. Moreover, it's like me and the several person that stay in boarding house and stay in uh, far from home that doesn't have a lot of money for instance. So this is the reason that if we talk about nutrition, for the several colleges that stay in the boarding house, I suppose that eat with meat, uh, even though there is no big nutrition behind that, so it will make you will be healthy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So in your opinion, uh, uh, it is, uh, it may not nutritional, but uh, it is. It can be an option to get healthier with a cheaper price, and also uh, whether it is safety or not. Uh, you consider that it is safety because um, maybe because it is produced in a contract environment, so that the in the end product uh, have low risk. Yeah, um, that's that's yeah. right. Okay, yeah, so you. someone said pemburu makanan murah, yeah, that is me. <laughs> and I do hope it will help us to be economical in the future with this cultured meat. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let us uh, see some facts regarding the nutritional, uh, the nutrition and the safety of cultured meat. Um, uh, some research uh, said said that, or literature said that, even though cultured meat, uh, mainly, sir, mainly from conventional meat, it has some different in the term of nutritional. For example, the vitamin and also the iron. The vitamin in the conventional meat is synthesized by gut colonizing bacteria. And the iron in the conventional meat is available in the myoglobin and also hemoglobin. Meanwhile, in culture meat, to have this uh, this mineral, it needs uh, to be supplemented in the biosynthetic microbial fermentation, uh, uh, so that we can fulfill the need of nutrition, or maybe we can exit the nutrition in cultured meat by uh, putting uh, adding some some another beneficial. Um, supplement maybe and uh, about safety it also say that uh, due to aesthetic and strictly content environment producing meat from so culture is safer than conventional production through animal husbandry and also it requires screening for infections agent and it makes them safer building storage preparation and also consumption uh, but uh, regarding what Mr. Ahmed uh, concern is about the use of antibiotics. And some uh, 
some research or maybe some literature that I saw, they also concern about the antibiotics since antibiotics, uh, yeah, they, we have some, we have strict regulation about the usage of antibiotics. So antibiotics safety of uh, cultured meat consumption. But actually, uh, there are another issue regarding the safety of consumption. Um, the process of cell culture is never perfectly controlled and that some unexpected biological mechanism may occur. For example, um, the great number of cell multiplication may have some dysregulations uh, and this dysregulation will have impact maybe in our health uh, in the product. So yeah, it needs um, more research to investigate the safety and also the nutritional value of cultured meat. Oh, I think I think this is the last question for our discussion today, since it is uh, 21 and 56. Uh, anybody wants to sum up our tonight's discussion? Maybe you want to conclude, even though it's not um, many questions that we answered, maybe you can uh, give a small conclusion about our discussion today. Okay, please, Mr. Indrawano. Yeah, uh, it's, it's like the big hope for us. We hope the next feature so we can eat uh, meat cheaply. <laughs> That's it. Okay, sorry. My assumption only eat and eat today because I'm really hungry after this. I would like to find something to eat. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Ms. Endomaro. Please, Ms. Araldo. Okay, I, I just want to foresee that uh, because in my opinion, it is uh, something new in our country, Indonesia, uh, since, uh, you know, it's uh, been under research uh, for maybe just a few decades earlier, right? So I guess it's something new. And uh, I just, I'm, just, I'm just worried about the concern of the acceptance of this kind of food in our society, uh, in which, as we all know, that a lot of countries, or a lot of uh, people in Indonesia, um, some of them are still uh, very conservative uh, in uh, using or in uh, producing uh, certain foods, right? Like um, some foods or some meats uh, require uh, to slaughter animals, like uh, some traditions in uh, Muslim societies, right, in which uh, they uh, highly, uh, you know, need uh, foods um, produced by uh, slaughtering animals. Uh, hence, I think it's still a big concern for uh, the scientists uh, to convince um, Indonesian uh, people, especially, especially to eat this kind of food. Uh, especially when it comes to uh, big cities, because I guess uh, it's not, uh, or uh, at least um, it hasn't been an issue in uh, most of Indonesian areas, uh, mostly in uh, you know remote areas or uh, in villages in which they can still produce or eat um, some meats by themselves. They can, um, you know, uh, they can um, maintain uh, their own foods like breeders uh, in the several villages and farmers uh, in which they can, as I said before, uh, produce their own foods while on the other hand, people in the cities, I guess, are uh, in need uh, to this kind of improvement since um, mostly they uh, can't uh, produce their own foods. Um, on the other hand, they also, uh, you know, uh, th there's always increasing number of people that are living in the 
uh, in the cities. Hence, uh, the need of uh, foods like meats are needed uh, in the big cities. Yeah, uh, I just I just uh, want to highlight about the uh, you know the acceptance of Indonesian people toward this uh, food uh, in the foreseeable future. Thank you, Miss Kesa. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Alvin, for your uh, completion. Uh, next, please, Mr. Sanchan. Okay, um, I suppose that uh, even though we know exactly the, the significant likeness of having cultured meat uh, to be provided in our country, we must be ready to accept that and to challenge uh, the current scientists that have been given scholarship to study abroad so that they can do something in regard to uplifting or increasing the level of uh, quality life or of our citizen because I uh, surely believe that uh, there are those people who live in underprivileged situations that really in dire needs of having these kinds of meat to help uh, uh, increasing the the quality or the size of the meat they have daily. I think that's for me. Uh, Ms. Kita, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sashan. Next please, Mr. Jalajayumu. Okay, thanks for your time. Uh, for me, brothers and sisters, don't forget that uh, science has a number of uh, purpose in his research, uh, as uh, including in these cases. I mean, cultivate me and. In the big and in the beginning, we see that uh, this reset has uh, generally has one goal, that is uh, uh, human consumption, and so a little bit uh, discuss about a negative impact for a human body. Like this, uh, like that. Maybe that's all for me. Okay, thank you, Mr. Yon. Okay. Um, next, please, Mr. Ahmad. Yes, uh, I see that there are so many hard work that will be done in the near future to create this uh, the new shot of the research in this. Uh, cultured meat to be viable in the daily life in our diary because um, it seems like the antibiotics so, uh, in the medium that is one of my huge concerns because uh, when we use too many antibiotics in our dietary it will create the antibiotic resistance for many microbiomes and it will give a huge drawbacks for our life and maybe it can create the new pandemic that not pandemic by the virus but the bacteria <laughs> it's so disastrous if that would be happen so maybe we need find to uh, we need find the new medium which is consists of non antibacterial antimicrobial and it will be a new way to create the culture and maybe the culture will be one of the i uh, mean uh, resource for the Martian that uh, positioned in the new planet of Mars. So hopefully it will be one of the common new market in our life, in our diary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ahmad. Uh, please, Mr. Rich Conning. Okay. Um, what, is it seems like a nutshell, Ms. Geisha? for this presentation. Hello, Ms. Yes. Kisha? Yes, yes, not so. Conclusion. Okay, um, okay thanks, Mr. Andre, for answering the question. Okay, um, regarding this topic, perhaps it will be the initial solution in our country to substitute our meat food, and we should try it. and because we don't know when we don't try it and after that perhaps we will evaluate it if there is something wrong about that 
but for the implementation, perhaps like Mr. Anga said, Aldo said before, it will it, it requires more time to be the acceptance of our society uh, because there are several societies in the conservative thought. So perhaps it will be as soon as possible when we got a pandemic, like there is not meat in the earth, <laughs> like a corona. Uh, today, uh, perhaps we absolutely change our behavior and our uh, our situation depends on what we need for fulfill our necessity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chikoneng. Uh, I think that's that will be. This is the end of our discussion today. Uh, I'm sorry for any mistake or mixnesses that I met. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to moderate this discussion. And thank you so much for your attention and contribution. And I'll give uh, it back to the host, Mr. Sanchan. Okay, thank you so much uh, for Ms. Keisha, such a really interesting delivery. Okay, so everyone, before closing, I will share you several uh, vocabularies that we gain after such quite interesting and long discussion. Okay, so here it is. Wait a moment. Okay, so yeah, here. Hey, hey. <clears throat> Jadi malnutrition itu bisa diganti dengan poor atau Poor nutrition atau insufficient nutrition atau unbalanced nutrition ya. Genam B yang artinya akan itu bisa diganti dengan be going to be atau will be karena itu tadi eh, cukup repetitif di awal. Eradicate ya, ya bisa berarti menghilangkan, menghancurkan bisa diganti dengan annihilate, eliminate. Jadi eradicate itu almost like destroy tetapi beda gitu ya. Jadi nggak bisa kita uh, ambil sinonim karena beda collocationnya gitu ya. Ada extinguish, decimate, itu memiliki artinya sama. Cheap bisa diganti dengan affordable, low cost, low priced, gitu ya. Jangan lupa hypenya. Dispute, perselisihan, ya persengketaan bisa diganti dengan contravention or conflict. Goodness beda sama benefit. Kalau goodness itu adalah kebaikan, kalau benefit itu manfaat, gitu ya. Jadi kebaikan itu kayak sesuatu yang baik belum tentu bermanfaat. Ya enggak sih. Rasa <laughs> manfaat itu exact di baik. Iya. I don't know. Oke. Okay. Pokoknya beda ya. Jangan bilang kebaikan itu manfaat gitu ya. Dan mereka two different things gitu ya. Oke, okay. impact itu bisa dibuat kata kerja dan kata benda ya, teman-teman. Jadi impact itu bisa berarti berpengaruh tetapi dia berbeda dengan influence ya. Kalau impact itu dampak yang sangat kuat. Jadi kamu kayak bilang strong influence. Gitu, dengan bilang impact itu jadi kamu udah mengcover uh, influence strongly kayak gitu ya bisa berdampak atau dampak kemudian dengan much more higher itu harusnya apa itu bukan much more higher tapi much higher ya oke okay, karena higher di situ sudah dalam bentuk komparatif kemudian extinct itu punah extinction extinct itu kata sifat sedangkan extinction itu adalah kata benda ya kepunahan gitu ya kemudian the more rich you are the more you need more the more you need money ini beda, ini kurang sedikit aja ya jadi bukan the more rich you are tetapi the richer you are karena dia hanya disebutkan dalam satu suku kata rich gitu ya kalau misalnya handsome beda handsome ya the more handsome baru bisa kita menggunakan more kemudian look after bisa diganti dengan race ya tergantung Uh, siapa subjeknya, uh, siapa objeknya yang mau dipelihara, konteksnya seperti apa, bisa juga preserve, misalnya preserve environment, race-nya itu bisa digunakan untuk children, look after lebih umum, susceptible itu artinya rawan, sama seperti halnya vulnerable, viable, visible, executable, dapat atau layak dilakukan, gitu ya, dapat bisa dieksekusi, nah itu disebut dengan uh, Feasible, viable, atau executable. Oke, okay, teman-teman, mungkin itu aja untuk malam ini. Thank you so much for attending our discussion. And last but not least, please, uh, of, uh, please open your camera so that we can take picture together. Oh, number one is Mr. Avida. I hope that my signal doesn't get any problem like 
<laughs> like less <laughs> meeting. Oh my god. Okay. Woo. Okay. Woo. Okay. The bull is coming. Woo. <laughs> okay. Dania. What about Miss Dania? Okay. Sophie always in the dark. <laughs> Okay. So, okay, jelajah ilmu who always travel in science jungle. Okay, what about Dania? Okay, we wait for you. Going one, going two, going three. Not yet. Okay, thank you. That's so wonderful to have you here. Okay, so on the count of three. One, two, three. Eh, belum siap tuh kayaknya ya. Okay. Okay, I'm going to save this one first. Okay, wait a moment. Okay, please uh, keep your cool gesture. Once again, <laughs> okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> That's ridiculous facial expression, but I really appreciate it, guys. So uh, to close the meeting today, I'm going to say, Hail Ota, yesterday we say tomorrow. And thank you everyone. See ya. Yeah, anytime, dude. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Uh, See you next week. Let's go. I want a 99. Thank you, Geisha.